So what you see in front of you today is the plan of the greater Israel. And let's start off from this section where you can see Pakistan here. Pakistan has been divided into free Balochistan. So you're saying, who has designed this? Well, let me actually show you the book and then we'll come back to this map so that you actually understand this better. This is a book called Zionist Plan, Plan for Middle East. Okay, This was a very special document. Please do look at its price. This is the book, and, and its ideas have been adapted since the, 18, the 1980s uh, for the Muslim world. And basically the idea is to divide and to cause division in the Muslim world more and more. So you can see uh, there's Afghanistan there, there's Balochistan there, Iran is there, and then you have Turkey divided, you have Syria divided, you have you know all these uh, countries divided, you have uh, Mecca and Medina separated from Arabia, Saudi Arabia is divided, and so you have this situation of a divided and a weak Muslim world, and I think there's some 36 principles that were given to the Israeli Foreign Defense Department, uh, you can read up on that as I'll show you in a little bit. So. This is the book, okay, and it's a very, very interesting book. Now, uh, this is what it's, this plan is called the Yinan Plan, okay, and uh, that is because the author of the book, uh, his name is Oded Yinan, okay, and so their plan is to divide the Muslim world into little pieces, into little states, so that they can be controlled. And this is, technically, this is the New World Order. Okay, this is a big part of the New World Order. And uh, as you will see that this idea, okay, and so this is the plan. This is the actual text of the plan, a strategy for Israel in the 18, 1980s, okay? And here's point number one, but I'm going to actually skip down to uh, point number six here in a second. Uh, okay, and you can see the Arab Muslim world, therefore, is not a major strategic problem. Okay, and then he goes on to talk about what to do with Egypt apart from Egypt, etc., etc., uh, the Arab states east of Israel are torn apart, broken up, riddled with inner conflict. And then he talks about how to use that to your advantage. Then, of course, Iraq. Then you have all the Gulf, uh, you know, uh, principalities in Saudi Arabia are built upon a delicate house of sand. Okay? You have Jordan, which is in reality Palestine. And it continues talking about Pakistan, the Shiites, which can constitute a third of the population. In, in Sunni Pakistan, there is a 15 million Shias who uh, are, uh, endanger the existence of the state. So what they're looking at is Sunni-Shia conflict throughout the entire region. Okay, And so this is the document. I'm not going to go over the entire document today, but somebody needs to make read this document very carefully and propose in opposition to the 30-some uh, points here. We need to, like for example, if it says Sunni Shia divide, we need to make sure, you know, somebody should make an opposite document to this would be interesting. Okay, so continuing on, but then the ideas of uh, Odin were taken and then uh, this person, uh, his name is Bernard Lewis, okay? And Bernard Lewis, in particular, wanted to really create strife in the Muslim world and to take this agenda uh, in the 1990s and the early 2000s. This book was published in 1994, Islam in the West, basically, again, saying that Islam in the West can never get along, essentially, right? And that they need to be at war with each other perpetually. Then he also wrote this book, Bernard Lewis, Jews of Islam. Now you may think this guy is, who is this guy? He's a nobody. You know, he's a professor of Princeton. He is a 
uh, an Orientalist Jew professor of Islamic studies who has had a great influence. But then after him and with him along the same time came along uh, this person, uh, Samuel Huntington. All of you have heard of him. He wrote the book Clash of Civilizations, right? And he took the same ideas of Odin uh, in the, but framed it for the larger consumption of the people, giving this idea, oh, you know, people that are ethnic groups, if you're Sunni, if you're Shia, if you're, um, you know, if you're Kurd, if you're Baloch, whatever you are, if you're, whatever your ethnic group is, you know, you, you, that, there's going to be a clash with others, whoever you are. And there's going to be a clash of nations and clash of civilizations, okay? So, then, uh, another thing that I just want to point out, and I'm going to talk about this, so keep your eyes open for this. The Samson option, Israel's nuclear arsenal and the American foreign policy. Basically, what Israel does is, it, Samson uh, may have been, uh, is one of the people mentioned in the Bible, he may have been a prophet according to some of the, even the Islamic scholars. But the idea is that, hey, if you don't help us, we'll kill ourselves and everyone. Okay, so they got nukes facing um, Europe, they got nukes facing Russia, America, all over the place, and basically, hey, if you don't help us, America, we're going to uh, kill you and ourselves. But I don't want to go into that, but this is the book, it's called The Samson Option by Sawyer, and this is a very, very prize-winning, a very credible uh, uh, um, writer and journalist, which uh, I'll bring him up one day, uh, but, you know, he he's written about this. And, uh, Oh, sorry, that is me uh, at an inauguration. Um, and then, uh, over here, I want to share with you how much instability of the Middle East means to the Israeli government. Report, Netanyahu says, 9-11 terror attacks were good for Israel. Okay? Uh, according to uh, Netanyahu, sa said Israel is benefiting from attack as it swings American public opinion, meaning 9-11 is good. Over here he says it swings the American public opinion, but 9-11 was good because it was the beginning of creating instability also in the outer world, okay? And, uh, and then so you have Bernard Lewis, Samuel Huntington, and the, uh, the foreign policy of the Israeli state to create a greater state of Israel uh, as you can see here. And um, so what are the things that they have been doing? Well, uh, here's some of the things that you'll find interesting. Uh, so let's look at um, this in a second here as soon as it comes. Uh, first of all, it's the Sunni-Shia divide. Okay? The Sunni-Shia divide has been horrendous and uh, for, for the Muslims and it's been, it's, it's you know, Saudi Arabia and Iran are fighting a war that at, at the end doesn't benefit them. It doesn't benefit Saudi Arabia, doesn't benefit the Sunnis, doesn't benefit the Shias, does not benefit Iran. It just becomes a stooge at the end of the state of Israel. You know, if Saudi and Iran fight and, and if Pakistan gets along, you know, involved, any of this happens, they just end up becoming stooges. Uh, little, little uh, weak republics under the uh, under the uh, the uh, the sovereignty of the state of Israel. Okay, now over here I want to mention something very important. Why has America, after even leaving all its technology, not left oil? And the reason is because the state of Israel does not want America to leave oil because if it leaves oil, then it'll have to it can leave the Middle East. The state of Israel does not want America to become independent, independent in terms of energy. If America becomes independent in terms of energy, then it becomes independent from the Middle East, which means that Israel can no longer use America as efficiently for its purposes. Uh, over here, I also want to show Jimmy Carter said this, that the U.S. is no longer a democracy. Okay, and you'll see... I'm talking about this because I'm talking about how American foreign policy is all about meddling in the Middle East for the sole purpose of, you know, acting on behalf of the state of Israel. Over here, those of you that, uh, let me see if I can get this right, 
but uh, let me just show you the main part, okay? Uh, because I don't see uh, here. There's a lady. She writes this. Uh, she basically applies to get some grants for gays and lesbians, and they tell her, "Well, we'll take, we'll do the gay and lesbian grants, but you have to go to the outer world and present yourself." So what she said as a result of that is, "What we see here is a clear evidence of blatant intervention by George Soros, who's a Jew." and his, his institute in an attempt to break Arabia and Muslims and shape their culture. Okay, so, with, so while the right-wing Jewish lobby pushes the Arabs into ethnic sectarian wars, their tribal counterparts within George Soros's IS, uh, OSI Institute do not do exactly the same. Attempt to break the Arab and Muslims by means of marginal and identity politics. Okay, so they're they're also using, uh, you know, Islam as a source of divide and rule within the like uh, basically creating a problem within the 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 the, the secular secularists of the state and the Islamists of the state, and so we have to be careful of that too. Uh, this is the dissident blog, the Arab Spring. You remember the Arab Spring? What did the Arab Spring do in the end? It weakened all of the Arab countries. So you have the Sunni Shia divide, which is a very big divide, and then you had the Arab Spring, which, uh, uh, you know, for many reasons, and I can make a video on that one day, but for many reasons, clearly it was uh, something that was orchestrated, organized, and, and made in, put into effect, right? And so you had the Arab Spring that, again, people rose up and all these events took place, uh, you know, and, and basically the bottom line is the Arab countries, they became weaker as a result of it uh, from Israel's perspective and to Israel's benefit as they see it, okay? Again, you have the Syrian conflict, you have the Yemen war, what's happening is all of you all, all the Arab countries, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, all of the Arab countries, they're just lining up to become stooges of, of, of Israel, they're just smaller states of Israel where you can't do anything. And, and, and this is going to be a terrible situation because Muslims are going to have to, you know, they're going to come to a point where they, they know they can't fight. They can't fight, they can't win. And then they're going to, ha they're going to have to have other alternatives at that point, point for which you can watch my other videos about what to do when the Dajjal comes. So over here we have, again, uh, you know, major events in Egypt since the uprising, since the Arab uprising, right? And then you have Saudi Arabia now, crumbles at home, right? You got like major problems with the killing of the journalist and the prince that's there currently and the internal war that they got going on. I have a video on that already. And then, which is interesting, is now, now the Israeli Jews want the American Jews to come to Israel. Okay, so I want to end with this. So a lot of things that are going to happen uh, in America, especially with Jews, is going to be very interesting. Okay. Um, according to, if you read this, uh, According to Yinin, who is this? He's the guy who wrote the book that we talked about in the beginning about the plan to divide Arabia. Okay, uh, Peace with the Middle East is unlikely and Israel should invest its uh, overbuilding. Uh, Yinin projects that USA Jews have no future in America. America was the biggest, best solution to the Jewish problem before Zionism. But today Zionism proves itself as the only solution. He argues that American Jews will find themselves detached from American politics, culture, and society. The Holocaust is long away, meaning people have forgotten about the Holocaust and won't have that sympathy card. Faded from American consciousness, that is, according to him, bad news for Jews. They will have to wander and their destination is clear, meaning Israel. As for those who fail to understand, this is hardly a promising news for the Palestinians and the region.
Okay, again, what do they want to do as a result of this? This is what they want. And this is what they are working for. And sadly, 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 they are doing a great job at dividing the Muslims. And we are doing a great job fighting each other off. The Sunnis and the Shias, you know, the Syrian conflict, the Yemen conflict, the Bahrain conflict, the Saudi conflict, the Iranian-Iraq conflict, the Kurd conflict, the Turkish conflict. You name it, we got that. And there's only one country that benefits from the weakening of the Arab states, and that is the state of Israel. So, and, and, and that gives way to what? That will give way to the greater Israel. That will give way to uh, Israel to expand its borders and its territories to become the greater state of Israel, which over here, let me show you, what is it that they envision for that is this. Okay. Uh, I think it's over here then. Okay. This is the minimum of what they're planning to get. Okay, this is the minimum. This is the, um, the, um, the promised, the promised land. Okay. And this is the promised land. Okay. So, greater Israel and... Israel's future for the Muslim countries. Destruction on the Arabs for the evil that's about to befall them. You think that we're in problem now? As they work towards this map, as they work to bring American Jews back, as they extend their borders, as they drop Masjid al-Aqsa, as they will even go to the point of doing nuclear war, this is, you know... Uh, this is the point I was trying to make with the um, with this uh, uh, book over here. Uh, the Samson option is.